My name is Anjali Field and I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. This work was done in collaboration with Tanyan Park, Kevin Lane, and Yulia Svetkov. And in this work, we develop and in this work, we develop methodology to identify social biases, particularly content disparities on Wikipedia. So why do we focus on Wikipedia? It probably goes without saying, but Wikipedia is a widely read uh, platform that's viewed by many people every day. And it's also become widely used in NLP research. Um, so searching for one anthology of natural language processing literature yields about 18,000 results and um, papers that have mentioned or used Wikipedia data. There's been a lot of work on the accuracy and objectivity of the content on Wikipedia. And here we focus on biography pages. A fair amount of prior work has looked primarily at gender bias in these pages and um, come up with a number of findings, including that articles about women tend to be longer than articles about men. Um, they also tend to be linked less often as in articles about women are less visible than articles about men. And um, pages for women uh, often contain descriptions of personal relationships more frequently than pages for men. And because Wikipedia is so vast, it's difficult to identify these types of disparities by hand. But if we have tools to automate their discovery, it can guide editors in correcting them. And this is something that has happened in the past that disparities that have been discovered by researchers have led editors to rewrite articles to correct them. Additionally, a lot of research has shown that NLP models are liable to absorbing and amplifying these types of data biases. So if we have tools to identify them, we could also potentially remove them from NLP training data. However, there are some limitations in the current work um, that has examined signs of social biases on Wikipedia. So one of them is the difficulty in controlling for confounding variables during analysis. So if we look at words that are overrepresented in pages about men as compared to pages about women, um, we find the terms that are listed here. So more specifically, words that are male associated tend to include references to sports, things like season, league, or club. Um, these tables are our results, uh, but they are similar to findings in other work that have identified words like football and footballer as male associated. And so the kind of naive conclusion from this would be that Wikipedia editors might um, omit the fit football achievements of women, um, but that's not really true. That's not really what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is that in society and what's as is always all reflected on Wikipedia, there are just more articles about male football players and female ones. But what that means is if we compare raw article statistics, if we compare articles about men with articles about women, when we find disparities in content, we can't tell if they're a result of differences in how articles about people of different gender are written, or if they're differences in how athletes or non-athlete articles are written. Another limitation in current work is that it's almost entirely focused on binary gender, but there are reasons to believe that other types of social bias are likely reflected on Wikipedia. So one of the dimensions that we look at in this work is race. And the Wikipedia editor community is predominantly white and male, and research has shown that um, cultural identity is a motivating factor in what content people contribute to Wikipedia. So that means a lack of editor diversity in the editor community is likely to be reflected in a lack of diversity in the content on Wikipedia. Additionally, there's been um, outside of the academic research community observed differences in the type of content about people of different races, and this has led to editathons to try to correct these disparities. And finally, what little work has been done in the academic community has suggested that non-white um, people are likely to uh, have content disparities on Wikipedia. So our goal in this work is to develop methods that facilitate examining systemic differences in Wikipedia biography pages about people of different genders and races. And the first part of this is methodology to reduce the influence of confounding variables and isolate the target dimensions of interest. The second part of this is um, corpora as well as methods for building those corpora of articles about people of different genders and races. 
And the intended use case that we have in mind throughout this work is to identify articles that might benefit from further editing. And I'm mentioning this now because some of the methods that we develop are focused on specifically the perspective of editors. So our first goal in this work is to isolate variables of interest from other attributes that might affect how Wikipedia editors write articles. And to do this, um, we develop a matching algorithm that I will describe in more depth. So what this matching approach looks like is given a target corpus, we take a set of articles that we want to compare these target articles against. So our target attribute is gender. We may start with all articles about cisgender women and all articles about cisgender men. And instead of directly comparing the full sets of articles against each other, we want to build subsets of these initial corpora that have similar distributions of all attributes other than gender. So we might want, say, similar distributions of basketball players in both corpora. Then, since we've constructed the corpora so that gender is the primary difference between them, we can compare statistics between the final target and comparison corpora to identify possible differences in how Wikipedia editors write articles about men and women. So if this is the goal, how do we get there? Well, we start with the target corpus, and in our case, the target corpus is always smaller than the candidate comparison corpus. And for each article in the target corpus, we want to identify an article from the candidate comparison corpus that most closely matches the target article. So it's clear that we need some set of attributes about each article that we're aiming to balance. And then we can measure how similar the traits of each candidate comparison article are to the traits of each target article in order to find the best comparison article. Now, fortunately for us, Wikipedia editors attach categories as metadata to articles, and these are often highly reflective of the traits of the article subject. So examples of categories are things like 20th century American politicians or people from Maine. These categories are clearly visible to readers and writers. Um, so that means that they're traits that might affect how the article is written. There might be other traits that aren't present in these categories, but if editors aren't aware of them, they're not clearly visible on the page, we don't really have any reason to believe that they affect the way the article is written. So given that we're using category metadata, we next need a way to measure the category similarity between target and comparison articles. And one obvious choice is for each target article, choose the candidate comparison article with the most number of categories in common. And this actually turns out to be pretty bad in practice because first it assumes that all categories are equally informative. Um, and second, it favors comparison articles that have more categories. So instead what we do is we represent the categories for each article as TF-IDF vectors with a pivot slope correction. So we use TF-IDF weighting in order to give more weight to rare categories, which tend to be more descriptive. So the idea is that a comparison article that has members of the United States House of Representative from Maine in common with the target article is a, probably a better match than the one that only has 21st century American politicians in common. The pivot slope correction is to account for the fact that doing information retrieval with raw TFID effectors tend to favor shorter articles. So in our case, that would mean articles with fewer categories. So after we build these TFIDF vectors with the pivot slope correction, um, we compare these vectors for the target article with the vector for each candidate comparison article um, and choose the nearest matching one using cosine similarity. We repeat this process for each target article in order to build target and comparison sets of match articles. So we evaluate this method over simulated target sets. Um, we randomly sample 500 articles from one category as a target corpus, and then we construct a comparison corpus and examine how closely they match using several criteria. Now, because of the way we've artificially constructed these simulated target sets, we expect a good matching algorithm to identify a very close matching comparison corpora. So all of the criteria that I'm showing you on this slide measure differences between the target and comparison corpora. So lower values indicate that the comparison corpus is a better match, that the matching algorithm um, did a better job. So the first criteria that we examine is how similar the distributions of categories are between the target and comparison corpora using standardized difference of means. And this is the canonical way to examine covariate balancing in um, causal inference studies. We then compare the pivot slope TF-IDF vectors um, against other similarity schema, such as just choosing the comparison article with the highest number of common categories. And we find that pivot slope TF-IDF vectors perform the best overall. 
However, ultimately, um, what we really care about is if we balance for possible confounds in the article text itself, not just in the associated categories. So what I mean by that is when we saw these football terms as being men associated, um, they were in differences in the article text itself, not in the categories. And we're sort of using categories as a proxy for controlling for confounds in the text. In evaluating our methods, then, we also use word and topic statistics to compare article text between the simulated target and comparison corpora. And we again find that pivot slope TFIDF performs the best. Finally, we examine if our method is liable to creating artificial findings. So for example, we know that the raw TFIDF factors favor articles with fewer categories. So we check if our matching method is creating differences in the average number of categories and article lengths in the target and comparison corpora. And again, we find that pivot slope TFIDF factors best avoid creating these types of artificial differences. So finally, we also evaluate matches by creating visualizations of category distributions. So before matching, we can see that um, these created visualizations of category distributions look very different for articles about Black or African American people and articles about the Yukandigit comparison corpus. However, after matching, and particularly after using pivot slope TFIDF matching, the category distribution looks a lot for the candidate comparison corpus, I'm um, sorry, for the matched comparison corpus, looks a lot more similar to the category distribution for the target corpus. So that on this side is um, that B and E look a lot more similar than B and A. Ultimately, we use this method to analyze articles about people of four different races and five different genders. And in the paper, we provide more details on how we identified each subset of articles and why we focused, focused on these particular races and genders. We computed a number of different analysis metrics over our data. I'm not gonna go through all of them now, um, but we provide more details in the paper and we also provide an online portal that contains the full suite of everything that we computed over the data. Now I'm going to show you results in a moment, um, but before I do that, I wanna talk about some of the limitations of this work. And one of the main ones is that there are a lot of types of biases that this method doesn't capture. Um, so for example, knowing that there are more male athletes than female athletes, and that it's normal for professional athletes to have Wikipedia articles is useful information, but that's not something that we're looking to capture through this approach. Additionally, in reducing the influence of confounding variables, it's possible that we're masking biases. So as an example, race is thought to be so integral to US society that it may not really be possible to separate it out from other attributes. Additionally, all the results I'm showing you are reliant on category information. Um, and while our method does generalize to other types of information, this is what we're focused on in these results. And finally, it's often difficult to determine the origins of content disparity. So for example, one of the things we find is after matching is that articles about women tend to be shorter than articles about men. And this could occur for a variety of reasons. So one is that editors might write articles about women less carefully, might spend less time researching information to include in them. Um, but this also might occur because secondary sources might have less information about women. And so that is then reflected on Wikipedia that cites these secondary sources. And this also could be reflective of broader societal constraints um, that make it more difficult for women to achieve the same kinds of high power positions as men. So as it's not always possible to distinguish what the sources of content disparities are, we view the main use case of this method as identifying articles that might benefit from further editing. Okay, so now we can jump into some of the results. And first, returning to our motivating example, if we look at words that are overrepresented in articles about cisgender men as compared to cisgender women in a raw corpus, as we saw before, we find a lot of these sports terms. But after we do matching, we no longer see these sports terms reflected in the most overrepresented words. Instead, they're replaced by more explicitly gendered terms. We do, um, out of the kind of top 10 most overrepresented words, still find some sports terms, but they tend to be a lot more specific. So we see that WTA, which stands for Women's Tennis Association, tends to be female associated, while NBA is, is uh, male associated. 
We also see differences in results when we compare lens statistics with and without matching. So without matching, we would find that articles about non-white races are typically longer than their matched comparison articles. But with matching, we no longer find significant differences for articles about African American people and Hispanic American people, and we instead find that articles about Asian American people tend to be shorter than comparison articles. Additionally, our methodology is also not limited to single dimensional attributes, and we can build target and comparison corpora, corpora that differ on multiple attributes. So one of the results that we find is that articles about African American women tend to be available in fewer uh, languages than articles about white American women, but in more languages than articles about white American men. And this is consistent with literature on intersectionality, which suggests that marginalization along multiple dimensions can be different from marginalization on each dimension independently. So while we focus on race and gender in this work, um, there's other applications for our methodology, which could be easily generalized to other characteristics. And there's also a lot of scope for future work in this direction, including improving matching methods and um, developing ways to further isolate the sources of these types of content disparities. I'll end by thanking my collaborators and agencies that provided funding for this work. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.